everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to take a look at the DC Designs F-15C. Now I've already flown this during a live stream and I have to say it is not up to my expectations especially considering that this plane costs $41 and with all the planes that I talk about on my channel I have paid that money. <laughs> I do not get advanced copies from anybody. I'm not up to that level of YouTube and so yeah, uh, just from the icon, I I already started getting worried because it's certainly, I mean, you know, with other planes, you get the normal icon. And uh, for the other planes I've flown, like the Coronado Ovation, for instance, or the Blerio, they, they, they all show up properly here. Um, so, yeah, that was a little bit worrying right from the start. We've got the F-15C and F-15E. And we have various liveries for them. Uh, there, are, there are weight and balance options that allow you to add weapons. And we'll take a look at that outside. So I'm not going to change any of that in here right now. And we're going to take a look at it at Edwards Air Force Base and talk about it a little bit more. The good thing is it's an F-15. And I like F-15s. F-15s are good things. And they're especially good things for touring around in because they've got a very long range and they're fast. That's mainly what I want out of an F-15 in Microsoft Flight Sim, that it be fast and that it have its range. Okay, right away we can hear the sounds. The sounds are an inter interesting thing. Now, I've not sat in an F-15 in real life, so I'm going to presume that these are realistic sounds, and it does sound like they've done some work with the sounds. It's not the stock sounds or anything like that. I'm hearing this, and... The soundscape is interesting, to be sure. And so that's one of the positive things. On the outside, this is what we have. So taking a look at the stores, which they seem to do some work on. Um, if we eliminate the external fuel, we can see that the external tanks do go away. And they only appear if there is fuel there. So I'll put the center one on and leave the other two off. The same is true for these. If I just put 50 pounds here, it's not going to put the AIM-9, the Sidewinder. But if I put 190, then the Sidewinder appears, but only one. And it's per slot. So again, if I put another, uh, that's for the opposite slot. We could have a pair there. And the two appear. Of course, they're not functional. Right? And so it's just for show. And the same for the other slots on the body here, the AMRAM there. You can switch between the AMRAM or the Sparrow by simply putting the different... I wonder what happens... Uh, well, as long as it's less than 410, it's not going to put a Sparrow. Now we've got a Sparrow. Okay, so that's how that works. So I find that nifty. That's a positive, you know. I like that functionality. Taking a look at the cockpit. Oh heck, actually let's fly first and we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, whether it can pass Mach 1. And this is what got me annoyed quite a big deal. The afterburners are a little bit iffy, so this is off afterburners and then on. That afterburner effect is a bit lackluster, let's face it. But here we go. I've flown the F-15, that's part of the Flaming Cliffs 3-pack in DCS world. I have to say, its acceleration is not anywhere like this. <laughs> um, the F-15 is a hefty, uh, it, including the C, is fairly hefty. It's powerful, but getting to 400 knots that quickly when you're not on afterburner is quite a thing. And now we get to the problem. So. I'm gonna put on the afterburners. You notice that we're at 510 knots indicated afterburner. If we go inside the cockpit, we are stubbornly fixated on Mach 1. Off afterburner. And I'm gonna try and keep it level during this. The HUD is also an issue. Its visibility is horrendous. Um, the Mach indicator is not on the speedometer here. That's another minor problem. I guess they didn't figure out how to put the uh, Mach dial, that, which is uh, in the center of the speedometer, onto that. But you can see M1.0. 
I'm off of Afterburner right now. I'll be level. And I'm gonna put it on Afterburner. So, I think this has something to do with Flight Sim itself as well. And the uh, modern flight model. In Microsoft Flight Sim. However, I wish if this was a limitation that they should have put that information on the page where they try and sell you the product. They should also put that information in the manual. There is a manual. Uh, it's a 40-ish page manual. But they do not, on the page where they sell the product or in the manual, discuss the fact that you cannot pass Mach 1. Which, I mean, it's a logical thing to expect out of this plane. That you'll be able to pass Mach 1 in it. So that is probably a big thing for a lot of people who will be looking at this and salivating at this plane. Now, could I be doing something wrong? Is there something peculiar about my install that is limiting me? I don't know. I mean, uh, I'll allow that possibility. You can tell me if there is a problem with my particular situation. It does say on the site, uh, on Just Flight, where it is sold, that has custom built and animate effects such as G Vapor, Afterburners, and custom modeled heads up displays. I'm, I'm not particularly impressed by any of these. Uh, this is the Afterburner. Uh, the G Vapor is that. I mean, it's a start, but you'd be forgiven for not being impressed there. I've seen it better on freeware models in X-Plane 11. Let me turn off the Afterburner for a bit. Um, we are over Los Angeles there, so as far as going at this speed in the sim, we are exactly Mach 1 here, uh, that is not a problem. Uh, if we go lower, it might begin to be a problem as more buildings appear and more scenery uh, takes up CPU usage and stuff like that and the GPU and all. But so far, it's fine enough. There's no particular problem. I have tried going past Mach 1 without the stores. That doesn't work either, if you're thinking about that. Taking a look at the cockpit, um, the switches are not exactly how it looks in the actual F-15C. Again, I have the DCS World version. I know what it's supposed to look like. There are photos around, too. Um, there, I guess they went for simplification and functionality. For instance, obviously you do not have a Chox switch in the F-15. That's a functional thing, I suppose. Pito heat works. Engine ice switch does not work. I cannot flick that. Um, this switch can flick. On, uh, well, it can flick up to there. Um, so the floodlight and the panel light switch but they're not turnable, you know, they normally turn continuously, it's just an off and on thing. Um, there are a lot of switches that don't work for me. Uh, I thought the HI HSI display should work, but as I click on here, it, that, that doesn't work. It's pretty obvious that this dial here and these are not going to work because they're just sort of painted on. Jessen switch doesn't, uh, maybe dispatch to Jessen. Um, no. I can't jettison the stores, I don't think. So those are stuck there unless you go into the menu to adjust that. You can't jettison the stores with that uh, pull. No. That doesn't work. Can it be open? Well, it says can't be lever. So since it has the hover over tag, I'm going to bet that that works. I wonder what's going to happen. Um... Is it open? Wow, but it's glare. Let me see from the outside. Uh, well, it doesn't look open to me. So, flickable but not functional. And if it was 20 bucks, I'd, I'd sort of be alright with it. I'd be alright with it. Uh, it is that, it, it sort of crossed the little uh, invisible line in the pricing where it has to be a certain amount of goodness, I guess. A certain quality. It has to make me happy a certain amount before I'm okay with it. You can't flick the master armor switch, but then again, that wouldn't work anyway in this game. Altitude hold. Um, 
anytime I flick it, it flicks down. The AP Master, it doesn't stay on. Heading hold. Looking at the plane in the CS world, which I did just recently after trying this for uh, this for the first time, just to remind myself of how it's supposed to be. Um, it actually has the dampers up here, pitch yaw and roll. The autopilot in the F-15 isn't very complicated at all. It's uh, an attitude and altitude hold system. I would probably only fly this without autopilot anyway. So that that gives you a general idea the nav frequency you can increase and decrease and it works there's a screen up here with the nav standby and that actually does change it and so there there is functionality the f15e's cockpit looks different it has more multi-function displays and maybe that one works um there might be a different way of changing those modes let me just see um, well, that is not clickable. That's not clickable. A lot of this is not clickable. But even that, I would forgive it if I could just get to Mach 2. <laughs> uh, and right now, we're at Mach 1 and fixated there. So apparently, I mean, I guess they assumed that everybody would know that it would be limited to Mach 1. I don't know. Maybe it was just a memo I didn't get. But th it should be something that they mentioned, I feel like. And hopefully there will be updates and Flight Sim itself will get an update so that things will be handled a little bit better, maybe. I don't know. But for the most part, it's an F-15. It has that going for it. And range-wise, it seems good. Uh, so, we might not have the speed that I wanted, but we do have range. And it would be interesting to see which could fly faster around the world. This or the Cessna Citation Longitude, which I think is the fastest stock plane if you have the premium version, which I do. Uh, so, I, I'm, because I think that has a longer range than the F-15 does. The F-15 doesn't, if it's not going to get past Mach 1, it doesn't need to run on afterburner. I wonder what the afterburner fuel consumption is like, come to think of it. Um, so we have the fuel indicator here. And we have a fuel flow indicator in pounds per hour here. But, to be honest, it doesn't look like it works. Or maybe it's misconfigured to go pounds per hour. I mean, it should be pounds per hour times... Times... 10, maybe? Maybe 100? I think maybe 100. Times 100. Because it's got the afterburner. But it doesn't change at all. It's not functional right now. So... Yeah. DC Designs F-15, everyone. Again, I'll, I'll allow for the possibility that I might have something wrong here. And if I do, please do tell me. But so far, uh, well, I hope it gets better. So far, I hope it gets better. So on that note, and sorry about this, I, I haven't really had occasion to be this down about something until now. But here we are. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fun to fly. I'm just getting over my initial disappointment, so forgive me. And I hope you understand why I am in the state that I'm in. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, with this, I'll say, oh, there's a scenery lapse. Maybe it's because I'm going fast. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, there it goes fixed. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.